From a police officer joking about the unfair death of a young girl. But she is dead. <laughs> <laughs> to a racist cop telling a bunch of teenagers to get out of his country. You know why? Because you don't belong in my city. Here are five corrupt cops who got caught red-handed. Disclaimer, all content in this video is for general educational purposes only. In January 2023, 23-year-old Janavi Kandula was crossing an intersection when fate took a cruel turn. A Seattle police officer named Kevin Dave, rushing to an emergency, sped through at an alarming 74 miles an hour in a zone meant for just 25 miles an hour. The outcome? A devastating collision that claimed Janavi's life. <laughs> Right? No, no, I'm not all right. The aftermath was a whirlwind of investigations and heartbreak. And the findings? The excessive speed of the officer was the undeniable cause. The report plainly states that neither Janavi nor the officer had enough time to react due to his high speed. There's nothing for me to do right now but sit, and that is... But in a shocking turn of events, months after the incident, there's another controversy surrounding the case that sparked tons of public outrage. Do we want, you know, to keep these people accountable and stop these sorts of things from happening? I mean, 74 and a 25 is without sirens on is absolutely insane. Fresh body cam footage released by the Seattle Police Department shows a police officer making some pretty disturbing remarks about Janavi just one day after the girl had passed away. Initially, uh, he said she was in a crosswalk. Uh, there's a witness that says, no, she wasn't. But that witness could be different because I don't think she was thrown 40 feet either. The footage shows a conversation between two officers, Daniel Arterer and Mike Solon, both high-ranking members of the Seattle Police Officers Guild. Uh, I think she went up on the hood, hit the windshield, then when he hit the brakes, flew off the car. But she is dead. <laughs> But guess what the worst part is? Otterer, who's also the vice president of the guild, was actually responsible for investigating Janavi's case, which makes the situation all the more horrific. After the accident, Otterer gave his report to the police officers guild after he performed field sobriety tests on Dave. Otterer concluded that the officer was not impaired and safe to operate a motor vehicle, implying that the accident was just well, an accident. The footage sparked outrage, not just from Janavi's family, but from the general public, who demanded justice. Justice for Janavi! Justice for Janavi! They didn't know about this until eight months later. They haven't been fired. They're still the vice president and president of the Seattle Police Officers Guild. Why do we want justice? It's, it's disgusting. It's not okay. In response to all this, Otterer went on the record to defend his disgusting jokes, claiming that they had been taken out of context. Otterer explained that his conversation with Solon and his seemingly cold-hearted comments were a response to hypothetical, crazy arguments that they thought lawyers might make surrounding the tragedy. No, it's a regular person. Yeah. Yeah, just write a check. Yeah, <laughs> $11,000. She was 26 anyway. She had limited value. But of course, Janavi's family wasn't buying it. They released a statement to the media saying, it is truly disturbing and saddening to hear insensible comments on the body cam video from an SPD officer regarding Janavi's death. Janavi is a beloved daughter and beyond any dollar value for her mother and family. We firmly believe that every human life is invaluable and not to be belittled, especially during a tragic loss. After all this, the Office of Police Accountability began investigation of Otterer's footage. The Seattle Police Guild is currently looking into the case, with the protesters supporting Janavi demanding for Otterer to be suspended. While Janavi's death might have been an accident, you won't believe how a cop tried to lie his way out of a courtroom. Hey, anything to drink tonight? Nope. Come on, if I check your eyes out? Yes, sir. All right, bring your head out here just a little bit. Okay. But first, look at this person who's driving the silver car. He's a man named Calvin Jones, who was pulled over during a routine traffic stop in 2016. How you doing, sir? How you doing, man? Do you have your driver's license? Do you have a on you? 
Uh, what, what, what's going on? Uh, I'd be happy to tell you once I see who I'm talking to, all right? But what happened during the confrontation between him and a corrupt cop was completely out of the ordinary. I, I need you to let me know, like, what's going on? Like, what, 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 I, what, what happened? What, 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 I'd be, like I said, I'd be happy to tell you once I, I see information. I'm not giving you my information until you tell me what you pulled me over for. All right, sir. Calvin had his wife and brother in the car along with him when he was pulled over. The dash cam footage shows the officer walking up to him, asking for ID. And that is where the trouble starts. Failure to give me my information? It's an arrestable offense, okay? So you can either do this the easy way or this the hard way, all right? I need to know what you're pulling me over for. Jones asked the officer to let him know what's going on and why he's been pulled over. But the driver refuses to engage and hits Jones with a threat that was completely uncalled for in the situation. But I'm not giving you my information until you tell me what you're pulling me over for. Here's, here's the deal. Either give me your ID or you go to jail. How about that? This, of course, freaks Jones out and once again asks the officer to tell him what's going on. Put, put, put this on camera, man, because we're not dealing with this. Give me your ID. Give me your ID. I need to know All right. why you pulling me over. But at that point, the cop has already called for backup to arrest the man. Detail 5 radio. I'll be on a stop, entrance to the parks. Can you send me another car? I have a cooperative accident. Soon enough, he's joined by two other cops who are there together to help him arrest Jones. You're absolutely ridiculous, all right? I don't care. All right, because step out of the car. It's been, it's been too late. I'm not stepping out the car until you tell me what's going on. All right, open the door. Hey, put this on camera. Put this on camera. The situation turns even uglier as one of the cops actually shatters the car window in the process for no particular reason at all. You gotta let me know what's going on, man. Not going You're going to jail is what's going on. For what? For what? You ain't... What charges? On what charges? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Suddenly, the whole situation turned into three against one battle, where Jones got injured really badly as officers were trying to put handcuffs on him. You're in getting out of the fucking car. <laughs> get out of the car now. Get out <laughs> of the ground. ground. On the ground. Put your hand down your back. While Jones is on the ground, passed out, they go ahead and arrest the woman and Jones's brother without giving them any reason. Let's go by the vehicle. Thankfully, though, the criminal charges against Jones and his wife were dismissed in January of 2017, after which the American Civil Liberties Union filed a case against the cops for their reckless behavior, forcing the police department to revise their policies and make sure all cops let drivers know why they're pulling them over. This case just shows that the law doesn't excuse anyone, not even cops. But the next cop decided to use his officer status to try and get out of a tough spot before his whole scheme backfired. Yeah, your tags are expired as well. I, I know that already. I work for Cincinnati. You work for Cincinnati and you got, you got I, tags. I showed you my bad. This footage is from April 14th, 2023, and involves a man named Justin Shields, a Cincinnati police officer who was flagged down by Ohio State Highway Patrol troopers in Claremont County for allegedly speeding. Well, how are you? Got you stopped your speed. My bad, bro. I appreciate it. Cincinnati. Okay, okay. Anything to drink tonight? Nope. Mind if I check your eyes out? Yes, sir. All right, bring your head out here just a little bit. At the time, Shields was a relatively new officer with a year and a half under his belt, but he definitely knew how the law worked. Yeah, your tags are expired as well. I, I know that already. I work for Cincinnati. When asked if he'd been drinking that night, Shields denied being under the influence as the officer performed some tests. All right, bring your head out here just a little bit. Okay. Follow tip my finger with your eyes on. Yep. Good. Man, how much you had to drink? Literally nothing. I took my friend home. All right, I'm gonna get you out and make sure you're okay to drive. Okay. Step up. All right, I'm gonna have you walk through the passenger side of my vehicle. You said walk to the back? Yes. Sir. Side, what do you want me to start? Just walk back there. Just walk home. Just walk? Yeah, normal. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know if you were doing the, if you were doing the, the, the step test or whatever. No, I'm gonna do HGN first. We'll go from there. The officer continues his questioning while Shields gets more and more defensive with each step of the process. I gotta hold I know, it out I know, there for I know, so long. I know, I know the process, like I know it. All right, so you know I gotta hold it out there for yep. so long so you stay looking here even making excuses for why he couldn't keep up with the instructions of the tests. Keep it in your head, just keep it straight, man. It's, it's the light, like, I'm sorry. 
The officer kept giving Shields chances to come clean about his drinking, especially when he smelled the alcohol on his breath. The man refused to be honest. How much you had to drink tonight? Literally nothing. Nothing at all? No, sir. The tension started rising when Shields straight up refused a breathalyzer test, raising his voice at the officer in the process. So not to drink at all? No, sir. So if you blow in a portable breath test, it'd be triple I refuse all that. You can call your sergeant if you want to. I don't need to call my sergeant. I'm, well, I'm, just, I'm, just, my I'm sergeant. just saying. But like, I literally have had nothing to drink. Nothing to drink, then it nothing. would be triple zeros, nothing. right? You mean you both know how it goes? I know how it goes. Yeah, me too. And you've been drinking? I have not. You have. I can still smell it on you as you're talking. You cannot smell anything on me. I can smell, I can smell, smell gum because I've had gum. After the officer asks him to perform some more field tests, threatening Shields with an arrest, his behavior totally changes. I want to put you through some more tests. I refuse. You refuse? Go ahead and turn around. Put your hands what, what, what test? Turn what? around. I will, I will do the test. So you want to do the test now? I will do the test. I really just want to why, why are you trying to re You know how this goes. I man. know how it goes. That's, that's that's why I'm asking you why you're doing this. Like, I want to get Because I smell alcohol. alcohol. I'm, doing, I'm doing my job. Okay, I will do it. Sadly, though, it's too late for the man at that point because he fails every single test that he takes, proving that he was definitely driving while intoxicated. Check's okay. You can go ahead and begin a test. One. Can I come back now? Yeah. Okay. One. Two. Seven. Shields is then arrested on the spot while he keeps claiming that he's innocent, but the officer is too smart to believe his story at that point. I, now you can stop those 30 seconds. Yeah, I'll right. say. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Are you serious? Yes, sir. You're under arrest for operating vehicle impaired. Put your palms together. A few days after his arrest, Justin pleaded guilty for drinking and driving and was sentenced to three days in a driver's intervention program and 16 hours of community service, along with three years of probation. His license was also being suspended for up to one year, which serves him right for lying to a fellow cop. Arresting a suspect like Justin is one thing, but accusing someone of being violent just to physically attack them is another thing entirely. Sadly though, these next two cops definitely didn't know the difference. Come on. Are you going to walk or not? Yeah, I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk. What idea going to do? I told you, you have a warrant for your arrest. In June of 2021, Officer Matthew Cavinder and his partner arrested Timothy Grant, a wheelchair user, for trespassing at a gas station and having five active warrants. What warrants do I have, sir? I already told you. What? You fought with, you, you've got five warrants. No, no, no. Listen, I, listen. Yeah. Okay. Call my mom, sir. But the way that the situation unfolded had a lot of people questioning the officer's behavior. Whoa, 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 All right, dude, you got a warrant for your arrest because yeah. you, you, you fought with a law enforcement officer no. and you had a court date and you never talked no, to a court no, date. No, no, no. Right. Body cam footage reveals the officers using an excessive and unnecessary amount of violent force with Grant, who was not just a senior citizen, but also used a wheelchair to get around. Stand up or I'm going to place right, I'm okay, you. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm okay, I'm okay. Just drop, drop that down. Okay, we'll problem. give your bottle of water back. Okay. The officers grabbed him by his shoulders, forcing him to stand up, despite him saying that he's physically unable to do so. Okay. Bring your legs in. Okay. Bring your legs in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you guys. No, come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. Stand up. Uh, okay. Well, dear, stand it. Stand it. Stand it. No. No, I can't, you can't. just told me you could walk. You just no, said I can't walk. I can't walk. I can't walk. Okay. And that's when things started heating up to the point of no return. The officers then pushed Grant down to the ground without answering any of the poor man's questions. I already told you, you have a warrant for your arrest. What, what arrest you're making for what? this a lot harder. Arrest for what? You're about arrest to get tased. Arrest for what? Stop, you're going to get tased. I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. You have a warrant for your arrest. Three. A warrant for my arrest. Yeah, arrest for what? Uh, arrest for what? A warrant for what? At that point, it looks like Grant's questioning has seriously pissed off one of the officers, who pulls a move that has left the world shocked. As Grant pleads for the officer to not tase him, the officer only gets more and more violent, asking the disabled man to stop resisting as he continues to use force against him. Stop. Stop. Yes, you are. After the body cam footage of the horrific incident went viral, Chief of the St. Petersburg Police Department, Anthony Holloway, blamed Cavender for using his taser for the completely wrong reason and then lying about Grant's reaction to the situation. 
In the report, he said that Mr. Grant was resisting with violence. You've all saw that tape. Mr. Grant was not resisting with violence. Soon after that, Cavender was fired from his post just so he would never be able to abuse his power like that ever again. But at least Grant had active warrants against him. The next cop started being aggressive towards two teenagers for absolutely no reason. On July 21st, 2018, a video encounter with Arkansas police officer Mike Moore was captured and shared on Facebook by Demarcus Bunch. Bunch and friends were in England, a city near Little Rock, filming a rap video when they noticed Moore observing and following them. Yeah, I mean, it, it made me feel like, like, it was, like at the moment, it was, I, I really didn't, I couldn't tell you what my emotions were. As they changed locations, Bunch noticed that the police pulled up once again, slowing down his car to see what was going on. What up? How you doing? I'm always doing good. Great, great, great. In the meantime, he also starts recording the interaction in case something goes wrong. And I've not been recording, and if you pay close attention to the video, he didn't have his body camera on his body at all. Like, who, who knows what would happen? Knowing his uncle was an England police officer, Bunch approached Moore to introduce himself, anticipating some kind of tension. And well, let's just say he wasn't wrong. I'm Mike Moore. All right. With Dale Scribner, the nephew. Yeah, we're there just trying to record okay. a video. Bunch explains how him and his cousins are shooting a music video and that they noticed the cop following them. All right. With Dale Scribner, the nephew. Yeah, we're there just trying to record okay. a video. Yeah, we, we just noticed you've been following us everywhere. Right now. But the response that Officer Moore gives them is something that Bunch definitely wasn't expecting. You know why? Because you don't belong in my city. How we, we're from here. But you understand, I know who my people are, right? Then Moore gave an answer that left him with no other choice but to start threatening the two young men. You know, I have never seen you here before, and I know almost everybody Man, here. I grew you up at 101. Well, I, good. I, I, well, grew, good. I graduated good. from England High. Well, good for you. My name's Mike Moore. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm not from here. Thankfully, the officer eventually walked away, and the encounter did not lead to any consequences for Demarcus and his cousin. But the young man made sure to call Moore out for his racism. When he said, "You're not from here," I'm like, man, I can't really say what I wanted to say. I'm from here. I, I spent my whole life here. I grew up on the soil we're standing on. The fallout from the incident, Bunch told CNN he was shocked and felt disrespected by the encounter. He said, like, you don't belong in my city, you're not from here. Like, come on, man, England is 3,000 people, everybody know everybody. DeMarcus then went on to share the entire incident on Facebook, sparking outrage from people on the internet. He demanded for Moore to be fired. I hope that, you know, it's other young black men, like such as myself, that like, they not afraid to, you know, step up and speak out and, like, when you have an encounter with an officer, you don't have to get loud or, you know, say anything out of the way just because, you know, he's speaking to you a certain way doesn't necessarily cause for a tough reaction from you. The video of the encounter went viral and the president of the Arkansas Fraternal Order of Police got in touch with him, letting him know that Moore was going to be fired immediately, which is exactly what he deserved.